r slash relationships standard cf 5539 says my so 35 meters and i 30 f are fighting about dungeons and dragons and i don't know to resolve it please hear me out and see past how dumb that sounds while i explain for some background we've been together like 12 years with a breakup in between years ago when we were young uns FTR I initially posted in some D&D specific groups about this, but clearly this is not a game slash rule issue. The feedback I've got from pretty much everyone including my D&D group is that game wise, I did nothing wrong. So here's the problem. I'm the DM, and have been running a game for almost a year now with my so, and 4 other players, SOS close friend, 2 friends of mine I met online, and another close friend. Of so who just joined as he also moved into my place. In case anyone isn't familiar, this all just means that we meet once a week with our fantasy characters, I tell a story and they all get up to shenanigans. This particular game I'm running is very lore oriented so character backstory plays a big part and everyone is very attached to their characters. My so has changed characters several times due to not getting along with other players until finally settling with one everyone had fun with. It's a game, the point is to have fun. SOS Char had a detailed backstory, and I said I'd love to play it out however it seemed impossible in game and out to get him to actually engage with the story. Not a big deal, but when I asked him, it was always you read my sheet you know my backstory, but well not tell me what he intended to do with this particular NPC. I hate players getting too attached to NPCs and this one ended up dying. So Rage quit the game and has refused to talk about it since it was weeks ago. Everything else in our relationship is fine and normal, zero complaints there, and we are open and honest about everything as usual, except the dragon in the room, which is my weekly DND sessions. I told him I wanted him to come back, and asked why has so insistent on leaving and refusing to talk about it. He was like you don't want to hear it, and I said I did, so he said I took the fun out of the game. Since nobody else feels that way including me I asked why, and he brought up one very small detail from the last session saying it was unfair to force him to partake in that. The thing in question was a story progression point. Think of it like an unskippable cutscene in a video game. He said it wasn't fair that I didn't allow him to alter this cutscene and that I was singling him out because the other players really wanted to move on with the pace of the game and I, as DM, kept refuting all of his attempts to break this story relevant scene. It ended up being like why cold and I doozes, and I responded, because magic that's why now can we move on he said I ruined DND for him, he doesn't want to play anymore, he was loving the campaign up until that point, he can't play with me as DM anymore, because I'm specifically out, to get his character slash him, I ruined his hobby, etc. I responded that I was devastated that he quit, and that it felt personal because, he sees how much work and passion I put into these stories and he constantly tries to get around the rules or break the story. He got so stroppy he put on headphones refused to speak to me and slept on the couch. At this point it's way beyond the game, in all honesty the other players are fine with him quitting and it's just this dark cloud hanging around when I'm trying to get back in the saddle after 2 weeks of skipping sessions to try to reason with my so. If we never mentioned this game again, everything would be perfectly normal, and carry on as usual. However this game is a big deal for me, majority of my social life outside of home, and a creative passion that means a lot to me. I'm feeling miserable, and skipped yet another week handing it over to a player, to do a one shot instead, because I feel too sad, and exhausted to rewrite my story around my soul leaving like he did. So if there's anything I haven't tried, please tell me. I cannot deal with having a taboo topic and I definitely can't deal with that dark cloud appearing when I catch up with my friends each week. I'm not going to abandon my hobby because my so has a hang up. About it, not a chance. I'm also not going to break up with him, INB forwarded demands divorce, I really just want advice here on how to proceed. 
if it's relevant we are both on the autism spectrum. Although so is firmly in denial about it he is usually very understanding and accommodating re any autistic issues. Except now, because he just keeps telling me that my special interest is ruining his day. Too long, didn't read, my so quid my dnd game over something I consider to be inconsequential, relationship is otherwise fine besides this dragon in the room, that feels like it could ruin my hobby, that I put a lot of. Hans Sommer Heathen says. Well, if nothing else him quitting the game will make the game better for everyone else from the sound of it, but I can definitely see how it puts you in an awkward position. Are you running in person or online? And if in person, is it at your place? I ask because it'll probably be a lot easier for him to get over it, if he's not physically present, when you're running the game. If you're running online then shutting yourself in a different room, is probably a good step, if you weren't already. If in person, and at your place, it might be worth seeing, if someone else can host instead. Beyond that, I absolutely get wanting to share your special interest with your so, especially when it's a shared hobby, but you might just have to accept that at least for the time being, discussing this particular campaign with him is just going to upset both of you. Ideally he would find another game to play in, then at least you can ask him how his game is going. Or if you were, or are, playing in another campaign, you could talk about that without it being such a sore spot, hopefully. Other than that, I'm not sure what X you can do other than just give it time. BTW, this isn't so much advice as an observation, but from looking at what you've described, of how the scene in question played out, I can kinda see why he got mad about it, although I do still 100% think he was overreacting. Loss of player agency over their character's actions can be very upsetting or even triggering for some people. Having the DM narrate your character's actions without your input or consent can feel like a violation. Does your group use any safety tools? They can be a good way of avoiding situations like this where a player is made to participate in something that makes them uncomfortable. Melimpia says. So, you as the DM killed off this NPC your so's character, and thus, your so, is attached to because you hate it, when players get attached to NPCs. All because he didn't know yet what he wanted to do with said NPC. If I may hazard a guess, the one thing he most likely didn't want to do with this NPC is kill him off. Just so you know. Then you're literally railroading the campaign, isn't role playing at least a little bit open ended by design. Players make their choice, and the DM has to roll with the choices, and come up with new story element if needed? But no. You needed to railroad the campaign so all your detailed work will be able to shine just right. I once played a campaign with a DM who loved his details just a little bit too much. My character had the ability to predict the weather, and I made use of it just to know if something volatile was coming the group's way. What I got was an at least 5 minute long lecture on all the details of wind, direction, speed, humidity, type of clouds one mountain. Over, accurate temperature here, and within an radius of 5 kilometers or so and just how many raindrops might or might not fall 2 nights from now. Maybe that got me jaded, but the whole mini campaign was so awful that I and a fellow player actively tried to suicide our characters before the session was over. Last but not least, you're playing a campaign, where everyone is very attached to their characters, but for some reason, you also had to change his character repeatedly thanks to peer pressure, other players not liking his characters, plural. And you as the DM just went along with it. No railroading to help him out, no nothing. And once he finally has found, that one character he doesn't get any grief about, you decide to go and slay his most important NPC. Way to go, Opus. You literally did everything you could to ruin this for him. If I were your so, I wouldn't want to play your campaigns either. And I wouldn't want to hear about them either. Because you did your best to burn that bridge, and then pour some gasoline on it to make it burn brighter. Blackhand says. I mean. 
you seem to have decided on purpose that you're going to date a selfish child who can't handle other people having fun without him being the main character, a behavior he also displays with a drinking issue, so as the obvious and natural result of that now you are dating a selfish child who can't handle other people having fun. I'm not sure what you expected. But if, as you say, he really is lovely in all other respects and just can't healthily participate in your weekly DND game. Have you considered having it elsewhere? Like just leave him at home and go play games at somebody else's house. I know this is inconvenient, I personally quite dislike trying to DM in someone else's house, all my books and minis and things are in my living room, but if it's that, or lose a relationship that's really important to you, or lose a hobby that's also really important to you. R slash relationships. Mysterious Wheel 4165 says. My 25 female, boyfriend 26 male, and his sister's 28 female, on relationship is starting to make me doubt I would ever be a priority in my RS. My boyfriend 26 male, and I 25 female, have been dating for 3 months. I noticed as early as the talking stages at him, and his sister have a close relationship, but thought nothing of it. I have 2 brothers and a sister. We all live in the same house, we're all cool with each other, but I won't call any of them my best friend. My boyfriend, on the other hand, lives with his mom and his sister, older sister is married and moved out. There was a time where they lived in an apartment alone, until their mother joined them 2-3 two, two, years in. Because their current apartment fits two people only, him and his sister share the same bed which he never mentioned to me, until I got curious why we were always in the living room, and I got it out of him. Of course I completely understand why someone would be a bit embarrassed about this, but I didn't think twice, because I know how close they are. They've been through so much together, that I won't dare question their closeness. I made a comment once about him talking about his sister a lot, and he quickly apologized, and said she's my best friend. I mean who am I to judge, when I obviously do not understand this kind of relationship, because I never had one. For clarification, the sister is in a 3. Year relationship with her brother slash my boyfriend's old friend, during our third or fourth date together, I remember him picking me up, and he was in the worst of moods. I asked what was wrong, and he said his sister was giving him a hard time, because he completely forgot he needed to drop her someplace, and we live an hour apart from each other. He even lied to his sister about seeing me, and she lost her cool, when she found out he ditched her plans for a girl. His mood did not change all day, and it felt like I was on a date by myself, because all he did for the rest of the day was text his sister intensely, and barely paid any attention to me. TBH, that bothered me, and I feel like that was an early sign, to do something about this lol, the sister and her bf are planning on settling down together soon, they even have a house built and already have a room ready for my boyfriend, because they can't live without each other. Recently, his sis and her bf traveled together, but before they did, the sister pressured my bf so much into joining them. My bf explained, that he won't want to travel, unless I joined them. I told them it won't be financially smart of me to travel now, and that was that. The argument between him and his sister kept going for a whole week. She would suggest solutions, like she would pay the ticket for him, or they would pay for the hotel and we just get our tickets. I wasn't going to budge, and my BF was getting pressure from both sides. I told him that I won't mind if he traveled alone but he insisted he wanted me to go with. His sister would throw in comments to my bf like you're such a loser, why don't you want to travel with me? I'm giving you solutions, forget about the money, I want you with us this is a once in a lifetime thing, why are you being annoying? What was weird is, that she was already traveling with her bf, and it'd be completely satisfied, if that were the case for me. But she was so adamant about her brother joining them while she was away for a week. My BF was feeling low, so I decided it'd keep him company and sleep over for a couple of days. 
I thought I was doing something nice, until his mother made a comment that made me rethink what was going on. She said I'm really glad you're keeping him company, because these two are inseparable, and get borderline depressed when either of them are away from each other I remember feeling weird the day before. His sister was coming back. We were in bed, that him and his sister share, and I made a snarky joke, and said now your sister's coming back, you won't need me, because I was just a replacement. He acted so disgusted, and told me to never joke like that again. The thing is, I have my confirmation that there's nothing weird going on between them, but I worry that I might not ever be at the top of his priorities the way it would want to be. I'm not trying to compete with their relationship, and I definitely would not want to get in between them. I somewhat still admire their relationship, even without completely understanding it. I grew up in a dysfunctional family, always had my own back, never had someone I can depend on. I thought I found my person within my boyfriend, everything was perfect, until I started noticing how codependent they are of each other, slash too long, didn't read, my boyfriend and his sister are really close, he shares every little detail with her, they can't be physically apart from each other for too long. The sister is in a 3 year relationship. Me and my BF are dating for 3 months. They would both kill for each other. Where do I stand in this relationship? Is it worth it for me to stay when I rightfully want to be a top? 655 e 228 says. There's a couch, yet they choose to share a bed. If they're both over age 12 that's bizarre. Judaism says. Nothing physical may be going on, but there is certainly something weird and unhealthy going on. It's only been 3 months, run. Yakus on G12 says. Why are you still with him? He's 26 years old, dude isn't gonna change. Why does he wants to be an extra in his sighter's life, rather than living his own life? Netherless good luck with them. Elfitch47 says. When does he plan on moving out on his own? Rainbow Shumming but says. A 26 year old man that shares a bed and sleeps with his sister is an immediate non-starter. Raymond Oro 34 says. Looks like you're competing against your boyfriend's sister for the top spot in his life. Good luck with that one. I wish it was Sapug Puppy says. Why are two 26 and 28 year old adults sharing a bed? I'm sure there's more than enough room to fit two twin beds in the room. If they had to share, which I also don't believe. Did they choose to rent a one bedroom together knowing they'd be sharing a bed? Please think about how inappropriate this is. Purple Cookie 451 says. First, there is nothing wrong with you wanting to be the priority. That's how it should be. Second, have you brought this up to him at all in any way? That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.